Hello everyone. Welcome to the Organizational Theory and Design course. We will begin with Chapter 1, Organizations, Key Concepts. In this chapter, we will talk about organization as a concept, the history of organization, types of organizations, dimensions of organizational design, and some other basic concepts of the modern world. Let's start getting to know the concept of organization. Organizations are social structures that we encounter constantly, but mostly don't realize. Even though we are surrounded by organizations, their intangible and invisible traits make it hard for us to grasp them wholly. The most important function of organizations is actually making people's lives easier during their struggle in the modern world. That is why many services and products simplifying our daily lives are mostly offered by organizations. Organizations differ from each other in terms of their scales, structures, aims, working methods, products, and offerings. Some offer products and services at international level, while some of them serve only for the region you reside in. This is why the organization theory tries to grasp and explain these many various organizations surrounding us and our lives. The history of organization theory studies dates back to a hundred years. That is when the basic fields of interest and approaches have been changed. Today, organization theory still preserves its existence with various focal points. While this theory was about to transform in important ways, it took a completely different turn toward the 20th century. It had a wide coverage in American business schools and business studies. The effort to elaborate on management and business problems under the name of scientism began standing out. Explanations by organization theorists gave the answers of how to build a more effective, productive, easy-learning, flexible, and innovative organization to managers. That was how the discipline of organization theory became one of the important fields of interest for managers who have to design a dynamic structured organization within an unstable environment. Organization theorists who strive to understand organizations deeply have made some attempts to classify various organizations. Without classification and categorization, one may face confusion. According to one of the common classifications of organizations, we can separate organizations into four basic types on a very simple level. Mutual benefit organization, business concerns, service organizations, and commonwealth organizations. Let's move on to the evolution of organization theory. To understand how organizations are managed today, we must historically understand the development of the wide knowledge within the organization theory field. In fact, ideas about organization management date back to ancient civilizations. However, organization theory discipline mainly emerged in the second half of the 19th century when the industrial civilization appeared. After the industrial civilization began, structures of production and consumption began changing too. Production mechanisms shifted to fabrication methods in small size establishments. If we are to separate this field into historical periods, we can shortly mention three periods classical management school, behavioral school, and modern management schools of thought. We talked about the concept of organization and the types of evolution of organization, but how do organizations create values? Common goals of individuals are among the most important factors that make up an organization. When individuals come together and form an organization, they can create more value as compared to when they act alone. They can contribute to people as their organizations create value. The more an organization creates value, the more it gains importance. No matter how varied organizations are, they go through the similar process of creating value. According to theorists, value creation has three stages, input, conversion, and output. Each stage of the value creation process is influenced by the organizational environment. 
The organizational environment is the set of forces and conditions that operate beyond an organization's boundaries but affect its ability to acquire and use resources to create value. Let's continue with the dimensions of organizational design. The dimensions of organizational design have been grouped into two basic categories. Structural dimensions are sorted as formalization, specialization, the hierarchy of authority, centralization, professionalism, and personal ratios. Contextual dimensions are labeled as size, technology, environment, goals and strategy, and culture. These dimensions cannot be dissociated since there is a connection between them and they mutually influence one another. While structural dimensions are about internal features of an organization, contextual dimensions influence a whole organization which also shape and create an impact on structural dimensions. Before we end today's lesson, let's have a look at some basic concepts that today's modern organizations challenge. In the present day, organizations operate in an environment where globalization, intense competition, and technological developments take the stage. Organizations that cannot adapt to these changes are not likely to survive. There are some basic concepts that need to be explained. One of the most important concepts among all is globalization, which brings many opportunities to problems together for businesses. Globalization is the process by which geographic constraints on economic, social, and cultural arrangements recede, thus increasing our global interdependence. It is not true for organizations to restrict themselves to a local environment in a global world. Global effects have reached such sizes that can influence local organizations. Therefore, organizations cannot ignore participating in global activities. The concept of intense competition, regardless of the sector, has emerged in today's fast-changing condition, which is more back-breaking than simple competition between companies. Globalization has caused competition to change its structural and dimensional form. The environment of businesses has increasingly become dynamic and the time factor has gained importance. Another concept that challenges organizations today is digitalization. In recent years, the concept digital has become a goal which businesses try hard to achieve yet cannot access fairly, just like innovation. As digital transformation becomes important for businesses, the effects of this concept have begun to be seen in every sector unexceptionally and even in living spaces. We know that these effects will gain more importance in the long or short term. If organizations do not want to be outcompeted by their competitors, they must dive into this issue with both feet. The concept of innovation expresses both a process and a product following this process in the literature. Innovation means changing, taking risks, stepping out of comfort zone. Businesses increase their productivity and respond to markets' demands through innovation. The sustainable development and spread of technology from developed countries to developing ones result from innovation. The social responsibility of organizations is being accountable for individuals, communities, and environment influenced by their activities. Being socially responsible does not mean that a business must give up its profitability principle, nor does it mean that socially responsible organizations cannot have the same profit as socially less responsible ones. Social responsibility requires keeping a balance between profit and cost to have this profit. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 1 of the Organizational Theory and Design course. Goodbye, and see you in our next program, Chapter 2.